The Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh tells the story of how when we look at the tips of trees in a storm, they look wild. Trees look like they might fall under the weight of the wind and the rain. But when we lower our gaze, when we look at the trunks of the trees at the center point and then down further toward the roots, we can see that the tree is in fact standing steady. And this idea of being able to stand steady in difficult times is something I'd like to explore today. Welcome to the Henny Flynn podcast, the space for deepening self-awareness with profound self-compassion. I'm Henny. I write, coach and speak about how exploring our inner world can transform how we experience our outer world, all founded on a bedrock of self-love. Settle in and listen and see where the episode takes you. Ordinarily, I'm a big fan of the phrase going with the flow. This idea of being able to move with whatever is happening around us to not become rigid, stuck, and to be able to adapt, um, to bend, to respond to what we are noticing around us. And this word flow is a word that is really resonant for me, as I'm sure it is for you and for so many people. There's a reason why we love, uh, you know, collectively why we love words, because they they do something in our psyche. Um, they speak to some part of us. However, today I'd like to share a practice um, or my experience of a practice that led to a very different phrase, um, a phrase that illustrated something for me that I really hadn't been expecting. We are all of us aware of the disruption that's happening in the world around us, whether, like me, you don't watch or consume news or you find yourself needing to be in the thick of that storytelling of what is happening, you will be aware it is impossible not to be. And... It can feel as though the ground, the very ground beneath our feet is unstable. I am hearing from many clients, from friends, talking about friends, loved ones, a sense of deep fear and concern that all the things that we hold to be true are being questioned. Um, We can see this politically, socially, culturally and environmentally, of course. And so, for me, it leads me back to practices that enable me to re-centre, to re-ground, to connect with what I absolutely can feel and know to be the deepest wisdom, to be the truest truth. And there is a beautiful practice um, that comes from many traditions, actually, which is to center ourselves and to connect with nature. I mean, in its simplest terms, this is really what it is. And therefore, it's really something that anyone 
can do. Anyone who has a desire to have a connection with nature or who has a mindfulness practice or a willingness to come into um, their body and to be really present in this moment. Um, It is available to us all, um, even if it's something that you've never, ever done. (laughs) And uh, even if it sounds a little bit bonkers, um, (laughs) it's still something that is available to us all. And the practice is very simple. It's to go out into nature um, and to take a few breaths, to take a few moments to still yourself, to feel your feet kissing the ground, again, as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, uh, to feel your body as it stands, weighted, held to the ground with gravity, Um, to feel maybe the cool wind on your cheeks, seeing as we are um, into winter now, Um, to feel your clothes on your body, to notice the sunlight or the darkness that is around you, maybe there are stars in the sky, maybe there are clouds, whatever it might be. To really come into a centered, focused place of present moment awareness and notice, really notice how it is to be just in this moment, not thinking about something that's happened in the past or thinking about something that might happen in the future. Just noticing what we're doing, where we are. And once we have this grounded connection with our beingness in this moment, then to allow your attention to drift a little, to look out and beyond yourself into the natural world around you and see what is drawing your attention. Maybe it's something large and very dominant like a tree or, or a great uh, plant of some kind. Um, maybe it's a, a hill, a mountain in the distance or the sea or a river. Um, and to look around you and then to bring your attention a little nearer to bring your attention to things that are closer by that maybe you can physically connect with in some way. And that's really where this practice begins. So let's imagine that what is drawing your attention are the golden leaves on a tree that you're standing beneath. And as you look at the leaves, there is one leaf in particular that is drawing your attention, your energy, um, seems to be calling to you in some way. And the invitation here is to take hold of that leaf in a gentle way. To take hold of that leaf, to have a physical connection with it Um, and in your mind or out loud to introduce yourself to the leaf. So hi, I'm Henny (laughs) and it can feel like the most random thing that we might choose to do of a day but it's a private practice, no one else needs to know that you're doing it. And there is something deeply delightful 
about making that introduction to something in the natural world. There's a lightness to it. There's a joyfulness to it. Uh, Maybe a little bit of uh, silliness to it. But this is an ancient practice. And once you have introduced yourself, to then ask that leaf or whatever it is that has drawn your attention, whatever it is you are physically connecting with, to share its wisdom with you. And it can be really helpful to close your eyes to do this practice, to really hone your attention in on listening deeply for what arises. Um, And if you've never practiced anything like this before, it can sound rather bizarre, um, this idea of listening in for a message. You know, it's... Maybe for you, you actually hear it almost as words, as spoken words. Um, for others, it might appear as an image. Uh, for others, it might appear as colours or, or an image of words. Um, for me, it's almost like the words come up from my belly, from, from my wisest uh, inner self. And just listen to what those words are. So the other day I noticed that I was feeling a little disconnected. Um, I've been ill with a virus, the dreaded COVID, and viruses often play with our heads as well as with our bodies and can infect our thoughts too and our emotions. Um, It's always really useful to be aware when we're feeling stuff very strongly, sadness, um, shame, um, low self-esteem, those kinds of things, and noticing if we've had a virus or if we might have a virus, because that can be, um, it can be very easy to slip into that kind of thinking when our body has been fighting something off. I had noticed that I was feeling a little afraid that I was never going to be able to get my energy back up. I was never going to be able to refine my mojo. And my head knew that was very unlikely, you know, logically, I knew I wasn't very well and uh, I was going to get better and my energy would return like it always does. But my heart was worried. My heart, you know, that place of emotion was worried that I was never going to feel any better. And so my hara, my belly, my wisdom, um, she told me to get outside and to connect with nature, to reground myself. And so I did this practice that I've just described to you. And what drew my attention was a piece of lichen-covered blackthorn. And for some reason, this particular branch of the blackthorn bush, the slow bush, um, really stood out for me from the long hedgerow along the side of one of our fields. And I held this lichen-covered blackthorn in my fingers. I introduced myself. And I asked her to share her wisdom. Now, the first thing that came up was this phrase, in the sands of time. And I struggled with that, if I'm honest. I, part of me wanted to reject it and just say, oh, this isn't working. And, you know, why are you even standing out here in your dressing gown in the field holding a piece of blackthorn? Um... But I stayed with it. I had my eyes closed and and I just kept listening and and still just these words in the sands of time were there. And then I realised that with my eyes closed and, and the slight unsteadiness of having been unwell, I was gently weaving backwards and forwards and I was actually holding the blackthorn to help me stand steady. And then I understood the message. 
stand steady in the sands of time. And that for me felt like the wisdom of trees. And I refer back to that Thich Nhat Hanh um, quote that I shared earlier about how when we look to the tops of trees, they can look like they're waving about wildly. But when we lower our gaze, we can see that they are standing steady. And that was the message from the Blackthorn, stand steady in the sands of time. I interpreted that as, you know, stay with what I was experiencing, um, trust myself and trust that things would pass and things would return. Um, so this stuff, this approach, it can take time to hear something coming through. And, you know, like me, you might hear something and go, I've got no idea what that is, but trust it, you know, give it a little bit of time, let it percolate until you understand what that wisdom is that you're hearing. Um, and don't lose heart if the first time nothing comes, if this is something that appeals to you, then um, that's okay. Just just keep listening. And and like I say, sometimes we need to interpret what we hear because it doesn't always make sense first time around. But this phrase, stand steady, felt so resonant for me. And And I think the message is deeper and wider than simply... Um, a message for me in that moment of not feeling very well and, you know, getting a little caught up in some negative spiraling. Um, it felt like it was a wider message, a wisdom for our times, in fact, to not get stuck in our heads, but to move our attention to where our wisdom lives, to come down from our head through into our heart and our belly into our wisest place and to stand steady in the sands of time and to trust and ultimately to connect with what we know to be most true. So that was a little ramble one today, <laughs> very few notes and I really hope you enjoyed listening um, and I'd love to hear what it sparked for you. Um, it's interesting actually, I mean even just as I say that, you know, that was a, ram a rambly one and you know, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. They're phrases of doubt, aren't they? Um, and so I'm just going to slightly rephrase those to say um, I spoke today from my place of wisdom, from that deep place inside my belly, the compassionate wisdom home. And I would love to hear how your own compassionate wisdom heard um, what I shared and it would be just utterly delightful if you decide to try this practice for yourself um, I would love to hear what comes of it I think one aspect about this is that this is really another way to access your inner wisdom I mean hopefully that's come through as I've been talking it's a way of listening in to that deeper, wiser voice within. And the connection with nature is a path that can make that uh, listening in a little easier. If you're curious about how to listen even deeper to your own inner wisdom, then uh, I offer a course um, called Wisdom from Within, which you can access from my website, hennyflynn.co.uk. And it is a guided practice, uh, an image work practice, where um, through, um, it's around sort of 40 minutes, an hour um, of 
deep re- relaxation, um, reflection, meditation. Um, you are invited to meet your own wise inner guide. Um, it's a really, really gorgeous thing to do. And if you haven't tried it, then I highly recommend it. And again, you know, the first time that we do a practice like that, it doesn't necessarily um, happen in the way that we expect it to. Going back to last week's episode, Great Expectations. Um, But trust the process. And, you know, we need to build these muscles um, just as we do with anything, you know, we're, we're building the muscle of, of listening, of deep inner connection and awareness. And, and that's, um, I feel incredibly beautiful work that will serve us for the rest of our life. So let me know how things go. And I send you a hug and a wave. <laughs>